This video is brought to you by Dr. Kristen R. Bromley's Guitar Method Book Series and Online Music Academy. I'm Dr. Kristen Bromley. Welcome to my online academy. It's so great to have you joining me here in these online lessons. This is lesson 51 in this series that is all about jazz guitar. As you know, I work as a jazz artist and I am so delighted to bring this course to you. Now, right now in the series, we are working on different comping concepts. Comping being playing those chords, especially in the more contemporary style, getting away from that Freddie Green, doing really what the pianists do when there is a pianist there comping the chords we do that same sort of thing on guitar so we're working on that now since lesson 33 we worked on a whole lot of different voicings we looked at the bossa nova style we're really working on that swing style right now in the last lesson we looked at the rhythmic principles and we looked at some different uh comping patterns you could say and how to start getting those under your fingers and and to use that same sort of approach to get more so you can get rhythmically improvisatory as you are comping in this style and of course in demonstrating this I've been using the voicings that we've been learning since lesson 33 so you can use whatever voicings you'd like to but if you haven't checked out those lessons you may want to learn those voicings there are more to come in the lesson series down the road after we finish this in the next lesson though we're going to get back to doing some more work on improvising those lines so we kind of jump back and forth a little bit as i cover the many different aspects of playing jazz guitar but the lesson the lesson i should say the chords that i cover since lesson 33 are really great. You can get so much mileage out of those chords, both the ones that have the root involved and the rootless voicings. So you want to check those out. If you haven't, then I'll be demonstrating with those. So in the last lesson, we looked at the rhythmic aspects and really rhythm is a major part of comping in this style, but we can add further like advanced great sounds when we get a melody happening intertwined with those rhythms and we can do that with the different voicings that we've learned so i have a couple of the rhythms that we were comping with in the last lesson as an example and ones that we we could work on so if you worked on those that'll be easy if not it's okay just hang with me so We've worked on a lot of different voicings. Just for example, with B flat major seven, I've got that that one right there. I could instead, with on that second string, have the thirteenth instead of the fifth. Or we know that we could have the sharp eleven. That's three different examples just there. If I switch between one and the other, I get a melody happening that isn't the same pitch. So with this rhythmic example up here, A, where we have do dot, and let's just work with that first measure, do dot. I can keep that melody voice doing the same thing, but when I move that melody voice, that's kind of nice, or I could go the other way. So that's what's happening there. If I got the sharp 11 involved, it's okay as well. So you can get different ones. Now we looked at rootless voicings, or even with these voicings, adding that high string, that ninth up there, gives us one more melodic idea. So I went as I was moving between those major voices and then catching that top voice. So that creates some variation that is really, really nice. You can also just do it in the rootless context and I can just do three notes if I want to, or I can get, I can get the different voicings there that use four. That top voice only has that ninth really. Though if I wanted to, I could potentially use that root, but with a major seventh chord, that doesn't work as well. So, you can move around with the different voicings that we've been working on with the rhythms, and that ends up sounding great. So that was an example with the major seventh. If it was a minor seventh, I've got those same types of things. I got that minor eleventh, the fifth, the thirteenth, and on top I have the ninth. With the minor seventh voice, it can work okay using that root and just adding that root on top. I've also got them with the root on bottom if I was using those, so you can do this sort of thing either way. But just with that, that rootless one on top, just moving back and forth between that top voice with that minor seventh. Just using both measures there, do, dot, dot, do, or I could do 
back and forth between the 5th and the 11th, or between the 13th. Or... Or... You could have the 13th in there as well, so you create some variation, which is pretty cool with that minor 7th. Same kind of thing could be done with the dominant 7th that we learned. So I've got the sharp 11 that I can get in there. Or the 5th. Or I've got the 13th right now. But I can get that sharp 11 and that 5th and that root or that ninth on top or that root. Just going back and forth on that root. Between that ninth and that root on top gives you some variation. Do, da, da, do. And of course you can play with the 13th. Play around with that top voice and you get some melodic variation. Put that in a 2-5-1 just using this rhythm here. Do, I'm doing C minor. Do, dot, dot, do. I just went to the fifth string form, but that's okay. I'll explain that one in a minute. So on our fifth string forms, we had the major 9 we had, and we had the major 7. We also had in that rootless context where we had that 13th and that 5th and even the sharp 11. So when I comp with that fifth string form, and I'm doing it in E flat right now, I can get some variation. I can do the same thing with the minor. So I've got that, and I can reach up to the 13th, and I've got the 11th on that top voice. So. can give you some variation and then the dominant chord where you got the 13th, the 5th, and the sharp 11. And I can come down and just catch the guy tones in that 9th. Or I could have the root in there and come off the root, move my hand back and forth between the different voicings. So I'm just sort of demonstrating that to give you some ideas of ways you can play with it. So the fun that I used to start with was just on the top string, seeing what was two comfortable things that I could do. So with that 2-5-1 in, in B flat major, if I start with a C minor 7, I'm just, I can go back and forth between having the root in the chord or the ninth in the chord, just with that basic minor 7. And then with the dominant, I've got the 5th the on top or the 13th on top, and that's really easy. And then with the major 7th, I've just kind of either got the 5th or the 13th. So that one I just could kind of leave there. But with this comping rhythm, do, da, da, do, do, da. And then I could change it up a little bit. I could at least change the voicing on the inside there if I wanted that 9th on top. With the major 7th, the root on top creates a tension that doesn't work very well. But if you were going fast, you could probably get away with going back and forth and having that root the same way we did with the ninth. So, something like that. And with the other set, if I was going to E flat, I've got the F minor 7, the B flat 7, and then the E flat major 7. So I could have. Just using the changes there with that top string and just using either between the root and the ninth for the for the forms that have the root that I'm not playing, but the one that's on the sixth string, and then between the fifth and the thirteenth for the ones that would have that low root on the fifth string. So. Something like that, but just a little bit of melodic variation creates a very nice sound. So you can start playing with that sort of thing. Now, you can just jam along with this over backing tracks. And of course, we have the backing tracks that I have created for the last several lessons that have just a bass line. So you can work on comping with major 7th or major 6th, dominant 7th, minor 7th altered dominant, half diminished, minor major 7 or minor 6 chords, and two five ones. You could use any of those just to practice trying to get some melodic ideas switching between the different voicings. 
I'm going to go ahead and just demonstrate it a little bit over the 2 5 ones. We're going to use the 2 5 one backing track that does 2 5 one, and then makes the 1 chord become the new 2 and then makes the one chord continue on, become the new two. We'll go through six keys that way and end up back with C major seven. And then as we continue, we'll go up a half step to C sharp minor seven and play through these doing that same pattern where we make the one chord become the new two all the way until we get to B major seven again. So that's how the backing track will go. I've used this one before. There's a link in the description below that will pull up that backing track. You can just jam along with it as much as you'd like to without me. You can also find all the backing tracks for this lesson series on on the Jazz Jam Along backing track playlist that is on the channel. So lots of great ways to practice there. But I'm going to go ahead and just demonstrate a little bit of this going over top of this backing track. I'll be a little improvisatory with the rhythms. You can use the ones on the board. We've done these ones before. But you can also just play with it a little bit and be intuitive. See how, just see how fun it is to kind of get a little bit of melodic variation happening in that top voice. So we'll hear six hits on that hi-hat, two beats of rest, and then we'll be in with that bass line just jamming along with the uh, chord progression going through the keys as I explained here. Let's do it. Alright, super cool. Hopefully that gives you some ideas of some things to work on, some ways to play with that, get some more variation in your comping. In the next lesson, we're going to look at using some passing chords, sort of sidestepping, doing some stuff that's pretty easy but gives us a little bit more variation as we're comping as well. Pretty typical things done in this style. So, I'll see you in that next lesson. Of course, these lessons are coming out every Monday and Wednesday right now, and there's Technique Tuesdays, Theory Thursdays, and on Saturday Saturdays we're working on improvising in the pop, rock, and blues styles with pentatonic scales. So lots of great lessons coming out right now each week. And of course there's hundreds and hundreds, over 900 lessons already available on the channel. There's the method book, so there's lots of ways to get help with guitar. Keep having fun, take care, and we'll see you again. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. For more in-depth lessons and to progress through a free guitar course, check out my Guitar 101 series on YouTube and my Guitar Method books, which all come with access to hours of in-depth video lessons. You can find more information about me and my products at kristenbromley.com. Take care.